The EDCON board has approved the proposed restructuring and recapitalization plan. EDCON CEO Grant Patterson says in response, lenders have extended waivers to allow time for implementation. The retail giant, which owns Edgar's Jet and CNA, has been under financial strain for some time now. For more on this, I'm joined via Skype by EDCON CEO Grant Patterson. <coughs> Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. Can you put a total value on the recapitalization plan for us? Yes, thank you for having me. It, it's probably in the order of about 3 billion rand, the current plan as it's written. Um, and that amount of money uh, with the conversion of all of our existing debt uh, into equity means that EDCON will have a good runway um, such that management, can fo management and staff can focus on fixing the business rather than worrying about the sustainability of the business. And so how long will this recapitalization plan keep EDCON alive for? The, the current plan is based on about a three-year runway. And within that time, the, the plan is to have the, the business profitable again and self-sustaining in terms of cash generation. Can you give us more details on that restructuring plan of yours? Yeah, it, it involves about 250 companies. It, it's been uh, in planning now for six to nine months. Um, <clears throat> it is a very, very complicated transaction. It requires uh, a whole bunch of ownership structures to be unwound, uh, debt to be converted into shares, new governance put in place. Uh, and so a very, very complicated deal, um, uh, which we're very pleased that that has finally been um, put to bed. And will you be offloading any entities? I might have missed that in, in the restructuring plan. The current plan doesn't involve uh, offloading any entities. However, you know, the, the, these are matters that, that um, come under consideration from time to time and will be dealt with at that point in time. But within the current plan, there's no intention to uh, offload ent any entities. Uh, in the Sunday Times report uh, that was speaking about Edgon's troubles, we heard that you were trying to make agreements with your landlords in terms of uh, rental agreements for shares. Uh, is that true and what, what's happening with that? Yeah, so as the statement says, we're subject to confidentialities. Um, you know, it, it's such a complicated deal. There's no one solution for one stakeholder. So all the stakeholders have come together with different solutions. So it's not possible to talk about it in any general terms. And in terms of spe about specific companies who participated, it's, um, we are subject to those confidentialities. When the deal is implemented in the um, first few months of next year, those details will be able to be published. Okay, still in that Sunday Times article, we saw that around 140,000 jobs were at stake. Is there still a chance of job losses um, when it comes to a restructuring plan? It, you know, it, again, the statement does say they're subject to regularity approvals uh, and some due diligence. Um, but really, I think those risks are now quite minor. Um, and um, uh, staff members and suppliers and staff of suppliers can go into the Christmas period with uh, some comfort. While, we, while we're still talking on the issue of jobs, there's been many allegations about the quality of jobs at EDCON, allegations that your staff are mistreated, uh, paid poorly and infrequently, as well as allegations of racism. Let's talk about that and what you're doing about that. Look, it's a very large company. Um, you know, we employ a lot of people. And so I'm absolutely certain there are you know, we make mistakes and that there are some employees who feel like um, they have been mistreated. We will more than happy address any of the complaints that, that are made. Let me just say, however, though, that we do have a satisfaction survey in place for the company. Uh, and so we do know those areas where staff are unhappy uh, and when they are unhappy. And let me say overall, our staff seem to be uh, happy. So, you know, quite comfortable with that. And then on the issues of any type of illegal behavior, you know, sexism, racism, any of that. We've got extensive procedures in place in the company and including ethics hotlines, which people are able to uh, get help from the company addressing whatever complaint they've got. Is part of any of your restructuring looking specifically at your employees? I saw you tweeting earlier um, on those allegations that, you know, you're going to try and make them better. And I think it's not, it's not isolated incidents. It's quite systematic ones that have been spoken about online. We'll be doing a sort of audit uh, beyond saying staff can phone in and, and, and complain. We'll be doing an audit to make sure that you are following 
labor laws. You are making sure that people aren't working for long hours. People are able to sit down if they need to. They're able to take breaks if they need to. And that they're getting paid decent salaries. Yes, I mean, look, I, I would put into perspective that, uh, you know, Twitter is not a necessarily, which is where this discussion has been happening, is not necessarily a good point of representation. However, I acknowledge that those incidents do occur. And so, yes, we will go and address them specifically. We'll find out where those complaints have come from and we will address them. Um, you know, I, I won't rest easy until every employee in EdCon feels valued, respected uh, and is certainly being treated properly. Grant Patterson, the CEO of EdCon, joining us there in their restructuring plan as well as what's happening with their jobs. It's time for